So programming and simulation using EBB Robot Studio, an introduction to basics, programming using Rapid and simulation using Robot Studio. Some basic workflow includes to provide insight to create models or robot stations in Robot Studio, to manipulate the robot model, to create robot paths. Robot paths uh, includes uh, targets, uh, which are the fundamental things in, in, uh, in robot uh, modeling and, and, and uh, simulation and programming, actually. And compose and write robot programs, which include all these kind of things, including IOs and, and conditional instructions and so forth. Validate programs through simulation, of course, and verify functionality, joint limits, configurations, collisions, and so on. Uh, where I would say Robot Studio has an advantage compared to many other th uh, software as we run the real software, which is actually residing within the controller. And uh, deploy programs via Robot Studio online to the physical robot for program verification. Now, this part, of course, cannot be done uh, in a, in a lecture like this one. We need a real physical robot for that. But anyway. So first, a few examples how Robot Studio looks like. Now this is Robot Studio version five. The current version is version six. It's quite similar. There are some um, some buttons, some menus, and some instructions that are changed a little bit, but not very much, and uh, sometimes hard to find. But anyway, uh, it looks like this, and uh, this is an example of two robot system doing arc welding of a, a component for automotive industry, for cars. And um, yeah, we can see that uh, the robot do the thing in the, the welding in tandem, so to say, at the same time. Uh, quite common in these kind of applications where you would like to have additional uh, efficiency in the production setup, so to say. And it's quite easy way to actually validate and check the things are working as intended and also we can perform all the programming before we have the actual um, the components uh, robots jigs fixture and so forth we don't need that for doing all these kind of things we can check it beforehand after we actually check that everything works as expected, we go forward to buy what is needed in this case. Other case is related to a flexible setup of loading things. Here we add one robot to actually hold the work pieces while the other ones are doing the arc welding. This could be seen as a extremely powerful and flexible positioner, which acts as the bigger robot, and the other ones are welding at the same time. Uh, similar concepts can be found in jig glass welding, where two or more robots are holding the plates while the other ones are welding. And in general, I would say that these kind of applications are quite hard to program. Uh, using traditional methods and uh, really uh, offline program and simulation stands out in this respect. This is just an example of palletizing operations where one robot is handling work pieces to uh, pallets and the other one is uh, operating these incoming and outgoing work pieces. It shows pretty much the type of graphics we can expect and the type of uh, work that is quite easy to do. And now if we want to include this kind of motions in the gripper we can do that or we can just ignore it and we don't need to do it if we don't like to but in this case it is included and it's pretty nice to see but also if that is part of a possible collision i would say that is pretty nice to include motions in the tool which is the gripper device in this case 
now data such as cycle time can be taken out from the system quite easily and this will reflect the correct cycle time to quite high degree of accuracy when it is filled up a signal is made to the other robot to take what is loaded in the incoming pallet and bring that to the conveyor for further transportation. Now again, this is just an example of what could be done and uh, include some signaling, IOs, uh, sensors and so forth that is needed to get things going. Then it waits for the other one. Spray painting and tracking uh, is a typical area where sensors also have to be included and uh, things are moving and the robot should be able to track whatever is moved along the way, so to say. Now the convey is moving to the right, to the lower right, so to say. Speed it up a little bit. And the other one starts operating at the same time as it is moving. And all these kind of features that is existing in the real system can be simulated as well as if it was the real robot. and also again to quite high degree of accuracy. Speed it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So some basic concepts related to programming and simulation. So a robot station and the virtual controller or the rapid environment within robot studio we have the robot station which consists of a modeled um, entity so to say or, or station comprising of a robot we have some peripherals we have work objects we have tools yeah different kind of stuff fences around the robot station and so forth so that is modeled and simulated in the station environment. We have target exist, uh, poses, we have paths, which consist of targets and uh, some conditions or action statements. We have geometries and so, and so on. And uh, when we have that, we can generate a rapid program. A rapid program consists of instructions that actually tell the robot to move to different targets, to wait a certain time to set a digital output and so forth, and, and or to check some data, doing some uh, testing of, of, of uh, data for what it should do in the next phase and so forth. So to do that, we start to create a model station, create targets and paths and so forth. And at some certain time, we do a synchronization to the virtual controller, which will generate a rapid code. In that environment, we can do some editing if we like to do that, sync back to the station, and the simulation will take place eventually. The simulation runs the rapid code as it is uh, written and uh, it executes it from the controller environment but it is shown within the robot station graphical environment so anytime we do a change within one of the one of the um, systems, either the robot station environment or the virtual controller, which means the rapid code environment, we need to save if it is a editing of the rapid language instructions. 
apply these changes and then uh, uh, if there are no errors in the code uh, otherwise it will tell us we do a synchronization to the station or if we are in the station and change anything we do a synchronization to the rapid or the virtual controller environment to update the code we want to run and then we can do a simulation so there are some issues related to using the mouse uh, you can try it out for yourself and uh, it is also uh, shown in the uh, help menu i won't uh, go in any details about that here but uh, with the left mouse click on items and um, there are some uh, specific issues related to uh, uh, to um, uh, pick uh, certain uh, aspects in the uh, station such as uh, um select corner points uh, or mid points and so on of any work object you can pan using the control and left mouse you can zoom with the middle wheel i would i think prefer the middle wheel uh, or the mouse and the zoom area shift plus uh, right mouse uh, and the uh, rotor station then select area 